We're going to be talking tonight about all things thyroid related. So we'll start off with, <clears throat> this is one of the most commonly diagnosed conditions in the United States today, low thyroidism now, or hypothyroidism, sometimes often also referred to in its autoimmune cousin form as Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Again, so you can have hypothyroidism and you can have an autoimmune form of low thyroid or hypothyroidism. You can also have an autoimmune form of too strong of thyroid function, meaning hyperthyroidism, but tonight we're going to be focusing predominantly on low thyroid. So I wanted to dive in with to talk a little bit about some of the different types of reasons why the thyroid hormone itself or thyroid production can be interfered with or can be hindered because this is something that most doctors don't talk to patients about. Uh, actually, it's, in my experience, it's quite rare. Most of the time when people come to see me, they've gotten, you know, their other doctors have diagnosed them with low thyroid. They put them on thyroid medication. They haven't really um, told them why they have low thyroid. And I think fundamentally, if we're going to understand this, if you've got that hypothyroid connotation, then you should know why. You should at least know what are some of the reasons why. And if doctors would do their due diligence, a lot of times they would actually be able to measure for these whys that we're going to be talking about tonight. So we're going to be talking about, so stay with me, we're going to be talking about four triggers, four very little discussed triggers for a why your thyroid might be under functioning. So again, if you're new to the Dr. Osborne show and you don't know much uh, about our message about our about what functional medicine actually is, stay tuned. We're going to dive into that and kind of give you some great information about that. Now, before we get started in any deeper, I'd like to poll you guys. How many of you have a diagnosis of hypothyroidism. So how many of you tuning in tonight have either been told by your doctor or your thyroid's not working properly, you have hypothyroidism? Uh, if you do, just type in hypothyroid in the comment section below and, and uh, drop me a note. I'd like to know how many of you are actually struggling and dealing with this as we, as we go through it. So I'm going to pop a slide up for you. We're going to talk about a couple of different major triggers for low thyroid that, again, like I said earlier, very rarely get discussed when you visit your doctor's office. So what you're looking at here in this research study is um, kind of a synopsis or a summary of some things. But there are two chemicals, BPA and perchlorate, uh, per perchlorates, that are compounds oftentimes known to create endocrine dysfunction. They're thyroid disrupting chemicals. And this, is, uh, this has actually been shown in a number of different studies. Now, if you're not familiar with BPA, uh, this is oftentimes found in plastics, right? It's one of the compounds in plastics that creates the plastic elasticity. So it's one of the ingredients in plastic that makes the plastic pliable. So the harder the plastic, the less BPA, um, the greater degrees of plasticity, the greater degrees of BPA. So like a lot of those water bottles that many people drink out of that contain BPA. Now I know what you're thinking, maybe they've, they've gone to BPA-free water bottles that are still plastic. I want you to understand that bisphenol A is not the only thyroid disrupting chemical. We actually know that it's not just BPA, it's bisphenol as a rule of thumb, it's bisphenols that can do this. So it doesn't just have to be limited to BPA. So even if it's a BPA-free water bottle, if you're drinking out of plastics on a regular basis, know that that can circle back around and bite your thyroid and create disruption. There are a number of studies that have shown that BPA and bisphenol chemicals can actually disrupt the way iodine is taken up into your thyroid. Now, those of you that don't know, when your doctor measures your thyroid, a lot of times, one of, the, one of the things they're going to measure is T4 and understand that the 4 is iodine. And iodine has to be transported into your thyroid gland. And part of the way it's transported is through something called an NIS synporter or a transporter. And what happens with BPA is BPA makes it harder for that iodine to be taken into your thyroid gland. So again, you want to be aware that 
If you're drinking out of plastics, eating off of plastics, eating out of plastics, using plastic aggressively for your cooking products, etc., storing your food in plastics, not a good idea. You want to use glass, you want to use ceramic, you want to use something other than plastics um, to avoid getting exposure to these chemicals. Now, bisphenol chemicals can also be found very commonly in cosmetics, and so those. This is one of the reasons why we say who is most affected or impacted with a low thyroid, we know that it is women, right? Women are disproportionately affected with a low thyroid and with low thyroid function. And, you know, there's suspicion that one of the reasons why is this right here. With the endocrine disrupting chemicals in cosmetics and plastics, women typically use more cosmetics than men, obviously. And so that in and of itself is one of those increased risk factors or one of those increased components. So if you're, again, using a lot of plastics, no, it can increase hypothyroid problems by reducing your thyroid gland's ability to bring in iodine. And of course, iodine deficiency is notorious for causing low thyroid. But we also have perchlorates, and these perchlorates are commonly found in things like jet fuel. Now, not that, you know, if you're not working on a runway where you're being exposed to massive quantities of jet fuel, then your biggest exposure is really just the pollution, the generalized pollution from day to day. But we also get um, perchlorates in fertilizers. So again, if you're doing your own gardening and using some of these chemical fertilizers, they can contain perchlorates as well, also known to impact and affect thyroid hormone. And so again, two chemicals that you could be getting exposure to on a semi-frequent basis or regular basis. And if you're struggling with hypothyroidism, and your doctor hasn't had a conversation about why you should put the plastic water bottles down, why you should reevaluate BPAs and other bisphenols in your cosmetics. Um, and, and potentially here, you know, you can't stop the jets from flying and not unless there's COVID-19 ravaging the world. <laughs> but um, what you can do is you can filter your air and you can filter your water to minimize the exposure that you get from water and air runoff. Same thing with fertilizers. We have a lot of chemical fertilizers that farmers use today and those things get into the water, they find themselves in the water table. And so filtering your air and filtering your water become very, very critical. So the key message here is, again, don't use plastics and filter air and filter your water. Um, now there are a couple different types of filters that I would recommend if you really wanna be accurate at getting these things out. Don't use a cheap refrigerator carbon filter or like your, your pitcher filters that are, again, those fit, pitchered filters are generally cheap carbon that won't pull a lot of this stuff out. You wanna use something like a reverse osmosis filter to get this done. So um, if we need to, those of you, we can put up a couple of links for, um, for quality products that are designed to filter some of these chemicals out a little bit more aggressively than just your standard refrigerator filter because that's just not going to cut it. So those are two chemicals. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.